Here we're going to look at the uh, EM algorithm for simple linear regression with right sensor data. And uh, this is taken from an example out of a book, Tools for Statistical Inferences by Martin Tanner. And here we're going to do a simple linear regression where X is dependent the independent variable, Y is time. And the example they give is uh, we're going to look at motorette data for uh, 40 different motorettes and observe their failure times. Let me try to post that on here. So here it is. Uh, they, they put it at four different temperatures and 10 motorettes per temperature and they run it until failure. And notice that the asterisks are censored times. They, they don't observe the failure. And this is what we're going to try to model with the EM algorithm. And, um, and that's where we're going. So here, your model is a simple linear regression. The error term is normal, 0, 1. That's a sigma, is a variance term. Uh, and, and like we said, the TI is the ith failure time. It's actually the log of the ith failure time. And based on our uh, error term normal, then we know the, the, uh, the failure times are normal. Um, however, not all the failure times are observed. So, there, we have some observed and some unobserved. Now, if, you know, but it, it doesn't matter if we observe them or not. If we, if we did observe them, it, it would follow this model. And we can't observe them, then we need to estimate these beta parameters given the knowledge that we have. So the YIs are observable, the ZIs are not observable, but we do know that the failure times are greater than some value, and that's the censored time. And um, uh, our T is normal, which if this, you know, th that corresponds to observed and unobservable, so our density is a normal distribution. Okay, and there's our observed failure times, there's our unobserved failure times. Um, it's still normal data. So the likelihood of this is this expression here. Let me rephrase that, the log likelihood. So you take the log of everything. And here, um, I leave it as a squared term because, you know, these are observable times. And disease we're going to try to estimate so I I'm instead of leaving it as a squared term I multiply it out so you get zi squared times two times you know beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 times z1 zi I mean times that um, now if we could observe all this we can calculate the maximum likelihood estimates of this, okay? So, and we're gonna come back to this. I put a star here on this expression because when we take the maximum likelihood with regards to beta naught, or beta zero, beta one, and sigma squared, it really doesn't matter what zi is as long as it's constant or doesn't involve one of the beta parameters or sigma squared. So if we, put an estimate of our ZI here, our maximum likelihood estimates are going to be the same except for instead of putting ZI, we'll replace it with our estimate. And so to go through the maximum likelihood estimates, we get this. Um, and this is just standard stuff. Take it partial with respect to sigma squared, set it to zero solve it, you get this expression. And again, instead of leaving it as a squared here, I multiply it out because we're going to estimate Z, ZI squared and ZI. Uh, and then, of course, the partials with respect to beta zero would be this, set it equal to zero, solve it. Um, then, with respect to beta one, we get this. And we get an expression here and they're, they're sort of all referencing each other. So at some point you have to 
solve one, you know, reduce one and place it in another to solve it. And so, so that's what I do in this step is I take beta zero and put it in here as our estimate, set it to zero, and then solve and you get this as our maximum likelihood estimate. And if we could observe the ZIJs, then this actually simplifies to the well-known result. But then you take this beta one hat and you put it in here to get beta zero hat. And then you take beta zero and beta one and you plug it in here to get your estimate of sigma squared. Okay, so now let's look at the EM algorithm. To do that, we need to find this Q function, which is the expected value of this log likelihood. And the expected value is in regards to our missing data given our independent variable, um, an estimate for our parameters, and we do have the knowledge that ZI is greater than CI. Okay, so uh, this is a normal, is distributed normally, and that you know that's the way we set the problem up, and then um, and then given that it's greater than some value. That means that this, the ZI, given this information, is what's called a truncated normal distribution. With this mean, this variance, and this uh, uh, range. It's from CI to infinity. And the density of it is this. It's just a, a standard normal distribution, or not standard normal. It's a, it's a normal distribution with mean... Uh, this and variance that divided by the cumulative one minus the cumulative and, it, and this is an indicator function that it's only positive when Z is greater than CI um, and I'm going to jump over some of these steps because I have a video that if you search statistics mat which is my YouTube channel and this title then it goes into a lot of detail about this truncated normal for this particular problem and in there, I, we find the expected value of ZI, or the expected value given that it's a truncated normal. And we come up with this expression. And now this is a normal distribution, and this is just the CDF, so one minus the CDF. The uh, expected value squared, expected, yeah, ZI squared is this expression. And, and remember that these we all have estimates for these parameters. So that's our first estimate of each of these. You know, and the, so this is a normal distribution. Um, so to come up with an, you know, it, it's, we need to estimate the zi in the log in that log likelihood. So when we maximize it, we can we actually get a value. And we're going to replace this expected value, expected value is ZI, in for the ZI and the likelihood. We're going to call it ZI T, which is our first estimate. And we have a ZI squared, which is the expected value. Um, so we're going to replace the ZI and the ZI squared with our estimates, ZI T and ZI T squared, in the, the log likelihood function. And then when we maximize it, 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 it's exactly what we got before. So this is the exact, this is the formula that I, I just used, but instead of the ZI, we use our estimate. And then here is um, the beta. And, and actually this is, these are the steps. You have, we estimate beta one first, and then we estimate beta zero because we use this beta one that we calculated here in our estimate and then to estimate sigma squared we take both of these estimates and plug it in here and then that gets an estimate of our variance now we repeat so before to estimate the zi and the zi squareds we had to come up with guesses for our beta one 
beta 0 and, and sigma squared. But now we update those from before with our new estimates. So these are the new estimates and then we recalculate the zi and call it zi t plus 1 and the zi t plus 1 squared. And then we just repeat until we gain convergence. And then I'm going to uh, illustrate this in R. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we in R in R. I'm on a Ubuntu machine. RK R RK Ward is my uh, GUI here. And let's just jump right into it. The M algorithm, simple linear regression with micro censoring. This is the data that we observed from the book. And we'll enter that data, the X, and then we have to transform the X according to what they did. We have the Y variables, and then we're going to take log base 10 of that. We're going to create a, a, a variable that is true or false, true for an event, false for censoring. And then I also like to create just the opposite, a censoring variable that's true for if it's censored and uh, false if it's uh, observed. And then the C time, I want the specific time, the specific censoring times. And that's what this variable is. Now we have to have uh, our initial guesses for our beta parameters and our sigma. And so I'm just going to put a one to each of them. And actually it doesn't matter what you put there. I've tried lots of variables and it converges to the same same numbers. So then here's our first estimate of our uh, z variable. Z, uh, zi, I'm going to call it 1 because it's a first estimate. And and this is it. So this is just plugging in the data. And the d norm is the density of a normal distribution. And that's what it is. So this, we put in our uh, censoring times, this is the mean, this is the standard deviation, and then 1 minus the, the cumulative. And then here is our uh, estimate, our z squared. And remember, this is our initial guess, using the, our guesses here. So then let's, let's enter that. And then I'm going to loop through this 100 times. It converges before that, but I just do it a hundred and I come up with the same exact numbers as what they did. So for beta one, remember that we have to put our estimates for zi and zi squared in this here. And so that's what, here's our z1 right here and here. And we calculate uh, estimate of beta one. And then we use beta one in our um, estimate for beta 0 and we also use our z and then the sigma we use our beta 0 and beta 1 in here and we also have a z z, I, z squared and z 1 then I reset our up these updated values I reset back to the beginning values and then I re-estimate Z1 and Z2 using the updated information and then that curly bracket means repeat so then I just repeat 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 until it censors or until it converges and then I print out our estimates so let's do that let's load this data and run it and here it here are our estimates so let's see what oh so beta 0 is this, beta 1 is this, and uh, variance is this. And this 100% agrees with the values that, that they obtained in the book. But me, I'm a visual person, so let's plot what is going on here. And so what I do, and let me move that in case you want to look at this code later. Um, so the circles are our original data. And the red means it's censored. And I jittered them just so you could see that there's several values there. Really, since the censor time is, you know, they're all equal 
for a given temperature they'd be right on top of each other and you can't realize that so if we were to fit a regression line to the data using sensor data as actual data that's what this black line would be and then through the EM algorithm we know their failure times are bigger than this because that's what they were censored at and the M algorithm estimates them to be up here okay and again this is jittered so you can see that there's multiple values here they'd really be right on top of each other and so here's our estimate and then we recalculate our regression line using our new data which you get rid of these circle the red circles keep the black because those were observed and then this is our best guess of what these would have been and then we refit the line and then that's the values that uh, we saw over here and they have already off the screen th those values so anyway I hope you enjoyed it if you did like it please subscribe so you uh, don't miss the next one. I think I have two or three more EM algorithm examples. Thanks. Bye.